Hello RPG fans and welcome to the Nobody's Channel. I want to say thank you for clicking Let's Play Divinity 2 Original Sin. Now I know this game has been around for a while, but I really enjoy it, you know? It feels kind of timeless to me, and because I enjoy this game so much, I wanted to bring it to everyone else who still loves it and those who maybe have not yet discovered Divinity 2. Now, I'm going to be doing a single player story run of this lovely game. Ah, hmm. Probably more to call it a, a work of art in my opinion. Anywho, I'm going to be playing on tactician mode which is one of the more difficult game modes. Um, it actually has two settings. Honor mode is a one life playthrough and if you guys enjoy this series enough I'm gonna go through and I'll run an honor mode playthrough with whatever character you guys want and you know you guys will bias the decisions now this one though I'm gonna go through regularly now tactician mode bring it on combat is demanding and your foes are devious and absurd for every surprise you spring they will respond with two of their own, not for the faint of heart. Let's begin. Oh, whoa, again? Tactician mode. Are you sure you want to start the game in tactician mode? Fights in this mode will be especially challenging. You cannot change the setting once the game starts. All right, you know, it's a little difficult once you say. They got a couple warnings. Oh, no, a third one. Final warning. There will be no changing the game's difficulty after this. Are you sure you want to continue in tactician mode? What the f fuck yeah I am. I gotta bring the people that good, difficult struggle for survival. That is video games to me. One. Hey, welcome back guys. This is the character creation in Divinity 2. Now, I'm going to be building a custom character, but for the next minute or two, I'm going to go over the story characters, these origin characters that are pre-made that you can play with any pre-setted uh, class as well, and they, they are all really fun to play. They put a twist in the game, and you know, it makes it interesting as you play the game multiple times to go through and after having played those characters and then playing next to them with your own character you you see how things kind of can get twisted as you go through the game and uh it's an awesome experience really it can make every playthrough a little more different than the other but anyways here we go this is the red prince and here's his story Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. Here's Sebel. I used to be a slave, kept under the thumb of the master, the bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that, you ask? With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles and when I finally find him, I will make the master sing a very different kind of song.
Ifan Ben Mez. Once I was a crusader for the Divine Order. I pledged my life to Lucian the Divine. The war changed everything. He sent me to save the elves I grew up amongst. I arrived too late. Lucian ordered the use of Death Fog against the Black Ring. Annihilating everyone I once knew in the process. Now I'm a mercenary killer. One of the infamous Lone Wolves. And my next target is none other than Lucian's own son. Thinking about someone I used to know. My cousin, the Queen, in fact. A tyrant. I tried to stop her, but things don't always go according to plan. She cast me out to a forgotten island and made short work of my allies, too. Lucky for me, I was able to commandeer a ship and began a new life for myself out on the high seas. Aye, but I hear that the Queen is at it again. And there's something darker behind her madcap schemes this time. If I don't stop her, I don't know who will. My life I've been a performer, a musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. <laughs> Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. I've got this under control. Step one, find out who or what is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. Oh, don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? Your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. I must even hide my true face beneath an ever-shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world. Trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed. Hope you guys have enjoyed story time. Now, what you just saw were all the original characters that you could play and have as party members that have uh, unique talents and special abilities, but also unique quests. And those quests aren't cut off from you if you don't play them. You can bring these people into your party and go play those quests if you like so you don't really lose much of anything now I personally enjoyed playing custom characters I really love going through and just making something of my own and playing the game with it you know that's why I play these it's it's like 
you know, a little piece of me in there. We go, and we just goon. But I've been stuck on whether I want to be an undead elf or an undead lizard. Not the perk to being an undead altogether is unlimited lockpicks, you know? If you like the steel shit and you like the loot, lockpicks are where it's at. So maybe you got a little bit of a thief on your team. I don't know. Maybe. Anyways, the lizard and the elf part is what tears me up. Now, lizards, they don't need shovels, which is really the biggest thing for me. I love playing a lizard because I don't got to remember to keep a shovel in my inventory. And they just start digging with their claws. It's, it's an awesome little innate ability that they have. And you don't even got to think about it sometimes. Like, it's just run it. But being the undead elf allows me to have Corpse Eater. And what Corpse Eater does is it will allow me to take the memories of body parts that I eat. And that's a lot of fun because you end up learning all sorts of abilities. You get quests. You can learn locations of treasure. You get to know what happened before seeing someone getting executed. All sorts of crazy stuff can happen as a result of just eating this the, the flesh as an elf. It, and that's where I've been. But I think I'm going to go with the undead elf overall. And what um what preset do I want to do? What what do I want to do with the undead elf? That is the real question. Now, I really love using magic in this game. It is very powerful, but sometimes being the front sword and board guy is a lot of fun too you know you just sit there and you tank and you tank you take so much damage and no one can stop you but how about being a mage sword and board what would that do how could i achieve that well i'm gonna go into my uh Combat abilities. And in combat abilities. I am going to do. Warfare. And. Summoning. The reason I want to do warfare and summoning. Is summons don't interfere with the lone wolf build that I am trying to do. So. It allows me to put more bodies into the field. But at the same time, like I said, I want to sort of board it. So I don't want to be running around with a wand. I want to be using the biggest fucking sword I can put in one hand. And just go around hacking slash summoning all sorts of crazy beautiful things. Uh, after that though... My stats are going to suffer a little bit because I'm going to be using two trees. Strength for my physical damage and physical abilities under the warfare tree. But... Fuck. This is always the hardest part for me. This is always the most difficult part, making the characters. Now, if you guys wanted a thorough, thorough rundown of all the skills and combat abilities in the game, let me know. I can go through all of it and explain every little aspect of the game that you'd like to know. But until then, I'm going to finish up this guy and do a quick rundown for you guys. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We finished our uh, character creation. I'm gonna brush over it real quick, like, and um, if you guys would like a more in-depth view of character creation, just let me know, and I can go back and I will run through every minute of it you guys want. 
However, what we've done here is created a conjurer knight. That's going to be strength, intelligence, and constitution. Constitution for the lovely health. Intelligence to increase the damage of these magical spells that I'm going to have as a result of being a conjurer. And strength, finally, for warfare-based skills and strength-based armors and weapons. These things are going to all come together beautifully. Finally, I'm going to have my civil ability, thievery. As an undead, with my unlimited lockpicks, it's really nice to go walk in and click, 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 click. Get through everybody's shit. They don't even know I was there. And I'm leaving with their house in my pocket. It's the coolest shit ever. Skills. Now, skills. I went with Battle Stomp, Elemental Totem, and Conjure Incarnate. Now, Conjure Incarnate is like a little crackhead demon monster that you can summon. And he likes to go around and smack the shit out of things. The neat thing about both Conjure Incarnate and Elemental Totem is... They take on the attribute of whatever surface that they are summoned upon, which means the incarnate, if summoned on poison, can do poison damage. The elemental totem, if spawned in poison, can do poison damage. You know, then that works for every element. It's an amazing aspect to the game, considering I'm going to be trying a lone wolf play, and I'm using elemental totem and conjure incarnate to fill up the battlefield with bodies, and I can choose what type of damage they do. And I'm really going to need that magic damage when I come against physically heavy armored enemies. Being the knight focusing strength and constitution, it's going to be very difficult to take those enemies down on occasion. But with these little tools at hand, should be no problem. And finally, Battle Stomp. Battle Stomp is going to allow me to knock enemies down, take away turns. I really enjoy taking away turns. It gives me more play time, positioning time, and allows me to prepare for the gooning to be had. But there's one aspect of it that I really enjoy. When there is fire in my path as an undead, that's not something you want to see as you take more damage from fire, but you heal from poison. You know, give and take, right? But with Battle Stomp, once you stomp that ground, you clear away the fire. and You have a clean path to walk down. I really, really love that aspect when playing Undead. Go anywhere I want and keep full HP. Great. Now for Talents. Remember, I am undead and corpse eater, naturally. Being undead lets you heal from poison, but regular healing will damage you instead. You will receive poison status even if you have magic armor. Amazing. People miss the mistake of shooting poison arrows at me when I've got that mask on. Oh. I just start healing and they go, oh! No way! Yes way. Corpse Eater lets you eat body parts and access the memories of the dead. As I had said earlier, I will be able to gain quests and skills and all sorts of information just from eating random body parts laying around. So this is going to be a cannibalism heavy game. I hope that uh, doesn't disturb any of you. And if it does, eh, this might not be the one for you, but stick with us. I'll warn you. Lone Wolf. This is the big one. This is this is the money winner. This is this is the reason I play this game. I love playing two-man parties. They are a lot of fun in my opinion. It brings a bit more challenge. But here we go. Lone Wolf provides plus two max AP, plus two recovery AP plus 30% vitality, plus 60% physical armor, plus 60% magic armor, and doubles invested points and attributes up to a maximum of 40 and abilities, except the polymorph ability, up to a maximum of 10 while you are adventuring solo or with at most one companion. 
This bonus is temporarily removed while there are more than two members in the current party. Incompatible with the glass cannon talent. Moving on to tags. I went with the mystical outlaw. I feel like that's going to be a very fun way to go through the game. Being undead and an elf. But I'm a little edgier, you know? A little less trustworthy with these sticky hands. And last but not least, the instrument. We are going to be listening to the cello every time the instrument is cued to play. Because it's got that lovely, deep, earthy ocean sound. Earthy ocean. I like that. Find that somewhere. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of source magic. And like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared and sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill God Woken, but instead I became part of their story. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. Well, look what the doctor. You're lucky they didn't notice just how thin you were under those bandages. Although, seeing someone wrapped up like that, they probably thought you had the scabbing plague. Heh? Look, laugh, but don't touch. Better keep that hood down, mind you. The living don't take kindly to seeing their future staring back at them. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Well, folks. I hope you enjoyed the uh, character creation segment. Join me for the next video as we start to delve into Divinity 2 and figure out what are we doing on this boat. I don't know. But stay tuned. See you next time for Let's Play Divinity 2 